Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, Johnny's is at golf clubs with Cat. No, I'm sorry, so that again. Golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> right three, two, one. Uh, get into shot. Come on. Hey. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Gary Martin, and today joins at golf. Oh, God, <laughs> what's wrong with me? Right, three. <laughs> let's do it here. Three, two. One. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Gary Martin, and today joins at golf repairs for you. We master fitter Sam Smith. You right, Gary? And it's a big day in the fitting shop. It is. Um, I've come for an iron fitting. Yeah. If you've been watching the channel, you might have picked up on the fact that I've been using the PXG 0317T, borrowed off James Robinson, which I'm absolutely loving. But before I pull the trigger and I'm in a fitting on these, there's two irons I want to compare them to. And yeah, yeah. There's no better man than, than you to kind of, you know, assess this for me. Yeah. So I brought down the Titleist T100. So they're all sort of, I would call them sort of player's irons, would you call them yeah, player's yeah, irons? Yeah, Um I used AP2s for many years from 712 up to 718. Never yeah. had a set of T100s so. though. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's a just that's the AP2 equivalent, isn't it? Now yeah. they just changed how we did the modelling. I ate a couple of balls up in Simulator Huddersfield and felt really, really solid. Yeah. There's another iron that's intriguing me as well, Mizuno two four three. Um, which again it's another sort of like small compact forged iron. Yeah. Um I know I, I had a set of Mizunos last year which you might have picked up on I sold them after a month or so. Reason being is actually is that I felt they were very strong and I couldn't actually, I just couldn't get used to it. Yeah. So the pitching wedge, well, like, I realised afterwards it was 44 degrees in loft, yeah. but it was going like 150 yards and I'd have needed another like wedge before my 50. Yeah, you just need something pretty traditional. Like um, I said, all, they're all going to be very normal lofts, nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, so that's all you but, need. But, really. but after I sold them um, and obviously I bought the pings which you saw, yeah. I actually. Between me and you, I, I didn't play as well with Ping. Yeah. I actually regretted selling the Mizuno, and I, I thought afterwards, the next time I'd just get a, an approach wedge, yeah, yeah. Uh, or I'd start me Voki wedges at 48. So yeah. I'm a bit gutted it didn't work out with the Mizuno last year, but it wasn't the club's fault. It were more me not having the wedges and probably persistence with them yeah, yeah. Uh, to sort that issue out. So, yeah, I just want to tweet them down here with you, obviously. And before we sort of, like, start getting into a fit in a club, just be 100% sure, because... This is going to be like, you know, a big investment for me, but also the set that I'm going to be using for a long time. Yeah, yeah. No, so we're going to be putting like, you know, S300s and everything, keep it fair. So we're just testing head to head, basically. Yeah. We're not going to go in crazy depth with swing weight and stuff like that, because obviously we can't do it with a demo wines for Mizuno and Titleist. Yeah. So just keep it fair, just normal shafts in all of them. And then just see the data and we'll go Yeah, there. and I think feedback on how I feel as well. You know, yeah, what, of what, what, what I can tell you, obviously, between each club, how they feel. Um, you know, and that kind of stuff. And we can have a look at, obviously, ball flight and, and stuff like that. Yeah, straight away, you, you get an idea if one's going to be a bit more better dispersion or better feel, better ball speed. Yeah. Um, and then we know what route to go down, basically. I've got to say, I never thought that I'd be potentially thinking of buying PXG irons. No, I think they've been a lot better, I'd say, since we've done the 0317 range, which is like yeah. their first kind of traditional range. Uh, they've been really positive. I think the more I've learned about fitting, the more I'm kind of sold on the idea, you know. Yeah, and like I said, for, for weighting purposes and swing weighting, it, they're, they're really easy to kind of sort compared to all the brands. Yeah. A little bit left. I think one of the things, you know, guys, if, you, if these have been on your kind of wish list and you've been thinking about one thing I can guarantee is I play these times a couple of weeks now, and if you wouldn't have told me they were hollow bodied, hollow bodied, I would have never known. Yeah, yeah. Um, like so, just because it's a quite a thin profile as well, so there's there's just a bit of bit of speed in there. But like I said, it's not anything too crazy. I've never once felt though like I'm getting a flyer or anything like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. which you might be worried about, guys, if you've obviously read that the hollow bodied. That's better. I mean, the feel of them, if you've tried these irons, it's just unbelievable, yeah. the feel. They are good. And like I said, everything today, we're just going to do standard lie. 
obviously, if we're going more in depth with fitting, we'll obviously yeah. look into lie angle, but just to keep everything kind of consistent, so everything's set up standard lie. That's a bit of a miss hit. Mm, yeah, I might say that one out. It's a bit heavy. I don't know if I'm swinging my best today, but I certainly feel like good. Come on. That one mint. Just in terms of like, you know, like ball flight trajectory wise, it's just exactly what I like to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when, because James's were actually like just standard lies, it might even be one flat. Right. I okay. felt as though I could aim just left at flag. Yeah. And either a bit of fade and miss it right, or it just kind of stayed where I were aiming. Yeah, and like I said, obviously, when we did the lie angle video, if anyone's seen that, as soon as we went flat to lie for you, which is yeah. a lot more consistent. So yeah, I think definitely you'll be end up being a little bit flat. Kind of the shot, really. I've been yeah, playing. just just a little fade. If anyone has bought these, whether it's through Sam or through a fitter, what I'd like to know, get in comments, please, is how do they actually wear? You know, because that for me, it's something I I do consider Sam to be honest. Yeah, I yeah. do like to know what the club's going to look like in like twelve months, two years time, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I'd hate to think that they clattered up that much in two years time. I'd, I'd want to change because it didn't look as it's good. It's a bit dinged up. Yeah. What I've seen, nothing's been, unless I'm on a PXG forum online and like, I've not seen any massive reports of kind of really bad clatter yeah. or really bad wear. Good shot. I think that, that's just exactly why I love these irons because I felt myself turn better through that. I think them first couple I might not have like clear my hips out of way as much. And I think main thing with the fin, uh, obviously in terms of like the finish. Yeah. Also we do like the black finish as well, so I will say they will wear a bit more. Yeah. But like I said, when you first initially get them, they are very cool looking. Um, so yeah, let's go on to we're going to the tightless next. I've had AP, I had AP tools for years, and I used to love the clubs, but it was like anything. If I'd had that many sets of AP tools, I just wanted to change, and I went to like ping for a few years. Yeah, like I said, there's never a reason to leave playing tight list. No, I think uh, that's a, be a very good option, very similar style of club. Um, I'd say, yeah, I'd, I'd say kind of a probably T150 is probably closer to the PXG. Yeah. Um, but like I said, if you wanted to go back to what the AP2 was, that's yeah. what they are. Well, I did look at the, if you went bit, C100s, it just doesn't feel as solid to me. Yeah. It felt a little bit more like hollowy. Yeah, which, yeah, like I said, it's, yeah, you, you go more down that route which, if you go a bit Which bigger. might sound crazy, because I'm looking at hollow iron in PXG, but it don't feel hollow. Yeah, it that's does feel, yeah, thing. like I said, when I have it, it doesn't feel like it's going to jump and it feels really it feels solid, springy. This, and I've actually, well, don't want to sort of disparage because everyone's got their own reasons, but I've seen a few T1, up to one, sorry, T150s up for sale. You know, off better ball strikers. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know fully why, but you know, I've just noticed in my friends list. Yeah, yeah. People who bought them and then obviously maybe went a step too far with forgiveness. I've not tried them to really comment. Yeah. Obviously, you're welcome to any comments, guys. If you've got any good feedback. I mean, that felt so solid. That felt really nice. Shorter. Hmm. Uh, very good point. Uh, might be a little bit, I'd say off the, off the shelf spec. Yeah. Maybe probably a fraction weaker than the 0317. But again, it depends if you need that. I mean, straight away, just that one shot, that's probably gone too high. I mean, at this stage, it's just about feel and kind of like, I don't know. I'd... Yeah, that yeah, it's certainly a tad shorter, isn't it? Possibly. Um, like I said, obviously, that could be to do with a loft, but it can be tweaked. Um, but yeah, it'd just be interesting to see the other data. It feels nice. 
that one I felt like had it left a little bit. Yeah. True. Turned a bit. I think so far, like, I can tell the difference in a miss it more with this. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that means it's less forgiving across the face. Yeah, potentially. Um, but like the it, it, the good strikes feel great, and then the miss hits don't feel as solid. Whereas I played enough golf with PXG, I feel like there must be more forgiving across the face. I don't. Yeah, notice. I think you could go either way down that route in terms of feeling. Some people really like to feel a miss hit to know yeah. where they've struck it. Other people don't really want to feel that harsh feeling. They just want it to feel. A similar across all the face. I think for me, and it's probably not a great way of looking at this, but when I start to feel miss it, I lose confidence. Yeah, yeah. So no, for me, yeah, definitely. it might sound backwards because you guys might think, well, you want the feedback in a bad shot. You need to know, don't you? But if I feel like I'm striking it well, I generally play good golf. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so looking at ball flight. I know I'm going to hit miss it's left and right, but as soon as I feel like I'm not striking the ball well, it just goes downhill because yeah. that's like my strength. I yeah, feel. Yeah. Like I said, everyone's different how they want to perceive it. I certainly like the feeling of it. It's solid. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely like a, a kind of head style that I feel confident with. Yeah. Um, I would say probably a slightly bit less confident. Than, than PXG. For some reason, when I put them side by side, I'd set T100's got a little bit thicker top line. Yeah. Um, blade length's probably similar. But I don't know. I think the PXG actually sits lusher to the floor for me. Yeah, like the grind of the sole. Like, yeah, maybe the sole. The leading edge kind of looks like it's tighter. Yeah. Uh, whereas the leading edge on the T100 sort of sits a bit, so probably a bit more rounded here. Width. They're pretty similar. Um, quite similar. Yeah, not a great deal in it. Let's try Mizuno. Yeah, let's go on to Mizuno. That's a two four three, uh, two four three pro, isn't it? I yeah, believe. it's a weird one. This one because I don't particularly like the look of it when I put it behind the ball. Like it doesn't sit. Can you? Can we just get a? I'll just put it next to PXG because that's my favourite. I would say it's a little bit thicker top line. And it's almost like a little bit more of a, a like an oversized head, you know. Just look at looks mm. a little bit more mass behind it. Um, the sole definitely looks a bit wider, but I can't ignore it. I just can't ignore it because Mizuno feel amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. They feel so good, um, and I know that they, they're quite forgiving as well. Yeah. It's just one I can't overlook. But I suppose the truth's going to be in how I hit it. Yeah, exactly. Mark on your green. <laughs> <laughs> that weren't very good. That one will miss it. It's a little bit bottomy, but it yeah. shows how forgiving they are. Yeah, it's done well. That were a tad heavy. Feel wise, feel any different? Uh, I think looks wise, behind the ball, it's the one that's I'm least attracted to. Yeah, which I think is a big um, thing for you. Like, yeah. You know, if anyone's seen the, the fairway video straight away, as soon as you went to see the free wood, yeah, um, you just didn't like how it sat. And straight away, you just lose a little bit of confidence. Just feels a tad clunky. Um, I'm just gonna. I've just stood a little bit open here. I'm just gonna try and play like a fade in. No. I think for me, where's this? Let's look at the sole width again. I think it's it's maybe a little bit too wide for you, and you just struggle to kind of get that compression. It like it's feel a bit bouncy when you hit it. I think like I don't know if it's that like PXG with blade looking like it sits close to the floor. Maybe it gets me like sort of trapping it a bit better. Yeah. I don't know why, but I just that was quite a high up the face. As I've well, certainly not struck this anywhere near as well, have I? Yeah, just like so I think. The sole whips are definitely a bit different compared to the other two. Yeah. And so you can get that kind of compression on it. Just do it one more, I think. 
Well, I can certainly eliminate one, Sam. So it's getting, and that's flown. I don't think it's low spinning. That's just flown. I mean, we aren't even looking at the numbers. I'm just not getting your confidence from it. The whole idea of going for this iron would be because it's, I'd, I'd want more forgiveness than these two. Yeah. I'd want it to perform better, you know, miss it and stuff. But I, yeah, I mean, you like that one, that's got a bit left. But yeah. Look how low spin that's gone out of nowhere. Ball speed's gone up. So that's where, even if it's not a hollow head, yeah. that's jumped on you, basically. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, you don't want that kind of inconsistency with strike. Yeah, look at, like, you had that one there, dead short straight, and one's just flown long left. Yeah. Um, where the Titus and PXG, you can see nothing's been close to that. That's what I was so impressed with the PXG, I mean, hollow. I, I were expecting flyers, you know, especially at, like, 9 and a pitcher. I've never felt that whatsoever. Yeah, like, so I think the main thing is getting him... It, like when you get fitted for him, get him spin deviation tight because yeah. then you're going to have less chance of that flyer. I think these will be a fantastic iron for somebody, but I just don't think they're for me. No, like, like straight away, I don't think strikes seemed as crisp. Yeah. Uh, you can tell by acoustics as well. And like it's about, that one then that's gone left and just really dropped with spin. I don't really want to be seeing that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, look at the data, but I think you're not a massive fan of that. So I think it's probably looking at one of them too really I think so definitely from a fitting point of view you know obviously you fit my drive and my fairway wood yeah you know you've seen my swing inside out do you think you could get anywhere near with them too like what well, in terms of like, the data to, to, to improve on that you know like obviously we what we got looking at the head so you just got the the weight here yeah I mean I'm obviously I'm biased in one way because I only stop PXG. Yeah. But f from a fitting point of view, it's so much easier to fit because yeah. you've got the disc weight. Obviously, with tight list, yeah, you know, I said the golf club I was at briefly last year, we, we stopped tight list. But even then, it, it's so much easier to fit PXG because obviously, yeah. yeah, you can change the shafts about, you know, in the demo kit, same as PXG. But in terms of swing weight, you, you're just limited. Yeah. You can maybe specify when you order from Titleist, but you can't physically try it sometimes. Yeah. Where PXG, you can. Right. And that's it's just taking that extra little step. Um, and that's the main thing. It, it's getting fitted into something which you can try that exact spec and yeah. order that exact spec. Where like a lot of places, you'll go, say grips, for example, you'll yeah. you'll try a standard size grip and then right at the end of fitting, right, you need mid-size grip. Yeah. So I haven't tried mid-size. Yeah. So it's, it's just taking that extra step where what you're ordering is what you bit, basically in a nutshell um so, so let's look at the yeah, let's the data um i mean you can leave mizuno out if you want i mean well you can show it i don't know yeah we'll show it um so in fact it's a little bit different data of everything like so mizuno you know even with keeping that really long left one in Still averaging kind of 159 you can see really fluctuates front to back you know 13 and 12 like I said, spin's way lower, ball speed's lower as an average. So straight away, I'm, I'm taking that out. It's not yeah. a massive thing. Again, dispersion's quite wide. Uh, like I said, I'll be honest, PXG's best for dispersion. Um, it's a little bit left, but I'm not a huge concern for me because that could be shaft related, could be lying or related. Yeah. So if you go in a more in depth with a fitting, that can be kind of rectified. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously a bit of a different ball flight. So very similar ball speeds, but tireless launch and spin's a bit higher. Um, and again, a little bit, Short to carry, a little bit total. For, for a seven iron, what is the sort of spin you're aiming to get during a fit? Um, it depends on your your ball speed, really. Like I said, yeah. I I definitely prefer the spin of a tight list, but I probably yeah. prefer the launch of a PXG. Yeah. But again, you go more in depth. We can try different shaft options that would get it more dialed in. Um, but I think main thing straight away, if you if you get, you know, you're comparing everyone with the same shaft, mm. and if the dispersion's there, then that's half a battle, and obviously yeah. Yeah, feeling good. Um, so yeah, like like I said, there's no right answer really with PXG or tire list. It's yeah. just whatever you kind of like the feel of or like look of, um, basically. Right. Well, I think to conclude, Sam, obviously I came here, I wanted to sort of like confirm that, you know, if we're going to go forward, we're having a PXG fit, that there were nothing else that could at least beat it. Yeah. I mean, we probably found that tire list, would you say potentially might match it? Yeah, it might match it. I don't think anything's... A clear winner where you need to go down this route. Like I yeah. said, I think in the right fitted set, you could play probably Tireless or PXG. Yeah. Um, so then, as I said, it just comes down to your preference. Well, I think, you know, obviously, I've had a couple of weeks playing in, in Pakistan with these PXG clubs. I've loved them so far. Unfortunately, James needs them back for, for testing and video, so I'm going to have to 
put mine in my pocket. Um, and I think I'm going to actually just commit to it. Yeah. I'm going to go down that route where I'm going to fit in with you. Okay. Um, and see where we get. And I think what I'll do, what will be quite an interesting video for you guys as well is, I'm going to probably test the 7 iron that James has lent me. Yeah. So the standard specs. And then test... Or, or let you f custom fit me for that to actually yeah. see how much difference there is between a stock. Sh you know, I'm I'm loving the stock clubs. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but then I might as well have them ordered and fitted. Yeah, because obviously, so. you know, we need a starting point. So yeah. anyone that's coming for a fitting, obviously, I'll get you hitting your original iron. But if your original iron's the same iron, yeah. then we need to kind of replicate what the build was. So like I said, I've got the same shaft that um, you had in before, like Elevate Tour X Flex. Um, I'll do the same length, same lie. Um, so we can replicate it, and like yeah. so that'll be our starting point. And then if that's the best, then that's the best. But like, so there's enough shaft options and enough weight options and stuff to go in depth and maybe find something better. So yeah, yeah we'll see. Well, guys, hope you've enjoyed that video. I'm going to be biting the bullet. Um, obviously, if you're not aware, I'm going to be playing a lot more golf this year. I'm going more full time with YouTube. So the idea is to make sure I've got a bag of clubs that are, are my choice of clubs for actually playing matches and gaming. But it doesn't mean we won't be testing other equipment on the channel and yeah. obviously doing reviews and, and product stuff like that. But I think it's really important if I'm going to get on the road and try and have a few matches with other content creators that I'm confident with clubs. So yeah, let's see what best fit you can I get. I think I'll come back, Sam, and, uh, and get fit for these irons. Yeah, sounds good. So thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Make sure you go and check Sam out. I'll stick his links in the description. Um, he's the best fitter I know. Yeah, and he's you. got some great kit here as well. And I think... A lot of people I know from Huddersfield's been down to have bag MOTs, uh, yeah. which is a service that you offer, and um, I think that's been great. Yeah, it, yeah. It's really helped them sort of, you know, know where to go with the set, yeah. rather than sort of just sort of changing things blindly, really. Yeah, like I said, just double checking all your set up, and if you need to go more in depth with something in the future, then yeah, we can do. It's just a case of booking in again, but yeah. yeah, it's just peace of mind a lot of it as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of days' time for the next fitting vlog where I actually get fit for the irons and I can't wait to see what specs have come out actually. Yeah, I'm intrigued as well, it'll be a bit interesting. Um, potentially graphite? Yeah, we'll definitely try it, 100%. Do you want to just show me your clubs by the way? Yeah. <laughs> just let's show you these before we go. Okay. Um, how... So you've gone black on black heads, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, so I've gone with CB in black, and then a new VA Sinister Shafts 110. Um, and like I said, you know, I've not had them long, about a week or so, but test, I've been doing a lot of testing in here with the stock set up, and yeah, it's been, been Would great. Would there be anything in me trying the CB when we come to do the fitting, do you think? I think definitely. That's, the CB is probably similar to the T100, to be honest. Right. So, yeah, definitely worth trying it. It's just not a hollow head. Right. So, slightly different feel, um, slightly different sole width as well, but yeah, definitely try both. Uh, one might just be a bit more consistent than the other. Right, looking forward to it. Right, we will finish on that note, and we'll see you in a couple of days' time. Bye.